Hey, good evening, everyone, my fellow grumpy friends. How's everybody doing? I hope that um, you're not feeling as grumpy as I am right now. <clears throat> but we are here to celebrate the year 1971. This is the year that our friend Jay was born, Jay Harvey. Blu-ray Jay. You know you were calling yourself that for a while, and I thought that was a very cool nickname, and then you stopped doing it, but I think you should start again. But that's just me, Jay. Anyway, so happy birth year, 1971. I was 20 years old. You couldn't care less, could you? I was 20 years old. I'm drinking coffee with uh, cream de cocoa, just for no good reason. Do you remember this place, TJ Cinnamon? Coffee place, cinnamon roll, bakery. Used to be in all the shopping malls and then it disappeared. Like everything is disappearing now. <sighs> okay, so 10 films from the year 1971. And um, I'm sure a lot of these you guys know about. In fact, I'm sure, as usual, we're going to cross over a little bit with the things we choose. Here's a, a classic film, The Last Picture Show, for, directed by Peter Bogdanovich, which um, well, I don't know what to say about it. I think everybody likes this movie. It, it is just beautiful black and white cinematography, a very good story. I remember reading, I read this novel before it was made into a film, and they did a good job transferring the novel to the screen but as usual the book is always almost always better than the movie and that's true in this case too but they did a good job uh, they were pretty faithful to the book uh, also now this this of course comes from the criterion collection box set called america lost and found the bbs story bbs was a studio that made several films in the late 60s early 70s and this is one of them and here here are two more films from that set in a nice little uh, two-pack. A film called Drive, He Said, directed by Jack Nicholson, and another film called A Safe Place, directed by Henry Jaglum. Now, these films probably aren't the, the most well-known, certainly not as well-known and successful as something like this. And the other films in this box set, we have Easy Rider, we have Nashville, we have... Uh, no, was Nashville in that? I don't think it was. Um, Five Easy Pieces, and... Um, Head by the Monkeys. Of course, that's not very well. That wasn't very successful either. Drive, he said, let me read what it says about these two films. The two most overlooked films in the BBS era, Drive, he said, and A Safe Place, are daring personal character studies and the directorial debuts of, respectively, Jack Nicholson and Henry Jaglum. Nicholson's feverish snapshot of the early 70s concerns, this is Drive, he said, a disaffected college basketball player played by William Tepper and his increasingly radical roommate. In Jaglum's delicate fantasy-laced drama, Tuesday Weld stars as a fragile young woman in New York, unable to reconcile her ambiguous past with her unmoored present. Orson Welles also appears and disappears as a Central Park magician. So, of course, I love Safe Place because of Tuesday Weld. It's a very unusual film, but it's certainly worth seeing. Uh, Drive, he said, also stars, along with William Tepper, Karen Black, uh, Michael Margata, Bruce Dern, Robert Town, and Henry Jaglum is also in it. Um, Safe Place stars Tuesday Weld, Orson Welles, Jack Nicholson, Philip Proctor, and Gwen Wells. Gwen Wells, um, if you remember that name, that, that name, she was in Nashville, which is also a, very, a classic film from the, the mid-70s. Okay, moving on to... Film number uh, four, this is Let's Scare Jessica to Death, starring Zora Lampert in a very unusual, very strange and hypnotic uh, vampire movie, which a lot of people have been discovering this recently, and they're learning to uh, appreciate it, so that's really nice. Let's Scare Jessica to Death. Here is Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry. If you remember, about a year ago, I did my Dirty Harry marathon. I watched all the films in about two days, something like that, and this is probably the best one of the bunch. Uh, it's classified as a film noir in most of the film noir books. Very good film and, and good good work by Clint Eastwood. Did, did he direct this? I don't think he did, did he? No. No, I guess he didn't. No, Don Siegel, of course. Should have known that. All right. Now, here's something a lot of you may not have seen. This is the last movie starring Dennis Hopper, who also directed it. Very unusual film, which actually um, was also another crashing non-success when it first came out. It was made for Universal Studios. They were not happy with what with what Hopper did, and they, they pretty much 
chopped it up. I'm not sure exactly. This this film, this version is 108 minutes long, and I can't remember now if that was the theatrical version that Universal put out or if this is the full version that was put together for this. I need to go back and, and watch some of the extra features again. Very interesting film. Let me read you some of the stuff about it here. Widely unseen for nearly 50 years, Dennis Hopper's much mythologized lost masterpiece, The Last Movie, is presented here in its first official Blu-ray release. Uh, when, a, when a Hollywood movie crew making a Western in a remote Peruvian village wraps production, the stuntman, a guy named Kansas, played by Dennis Hopper, remains attempting to find redemption in the isolation of Peru and the arms of a, of a former prostitute. Meanwhile, the local Indians take over the abandoned set and begin to stage a ritualistic reenactment of the production with Kansas as their sacrificial lamb. It gets very, very strange. Uh, consciously self-reflective and based on a screenplay by Rebel Without a Cause writer Stuart Stern. The last, you have to remember that uh, Dennis Hopper was also in Rebel Without a Cause. The last movie co-stars Christopher... Yeah, I need to take a drink of coffee here, folks. <clears throat> ah, Chris Christopherson, Julie Adams, who was in, of course, she's famous for being in The Creature from the Black Lagoon, and she gives a very unusual for her and courageous performance in this movie. Uh, Stella Garcia, Peter Fonda, Dean Stockwell, Tony Basil, the dancer, the very famous dancer and choreographer, Russ Tamblin, Michelle Phillips, and director Samuel Fuller is in it. Uh, great little package, lots of extra features. And has anybody, anybody else seen this movie? It's definitely worth a look. Very unusual film. Here's a Dustin Hoffman film that I did not see until fairly recently. It's called Who is Harry Kellerman and Why is He Saying Those Terrible Things About Me? Right? Very unusual little flick. Co-starring Barbara Harris, who won a nomination for Best Supporting Actress of 1971 for this movie. She is very, very good in this movie. Dustin Hoffman, let's see, he plays, um, I'll, read you, I'll read you this stuff here. <clears throat> this cerebral, quirky comedy explores midlife crisis through a rock music composer's perspective. Scream legend Dustin Hoffman plays a neurotic songwriter at the peak of his career who can't seem to love anybody, least of all himself. He becomes increasingly depressed as his delusional paranoia is fueled by a mysterious stranger named Harry Kellerman who has been badmouthing him. So that's, he's trying to figure out who this guy is. Jack Warden is also in it as his, uh, I think he plays a psychiatrist. Uh, yeah, his therapist. Interesting little movie with, with a nice twist at the end. Um, yeah, sort of a classic downer of a, of a 1970s film, but very much, much worth seeing. Speaking of downers, here is Jane Fonda in Clute, also with Donald Sutherland. A movie that I did not begin to appreciate until I saw this this Criterion Collection release just fairly recently. I had seen it before, didn't see it in the theaters, but I saw it on television way back in the cable uh, HBO days. Never liked it, but I finally gave it a, a really good critical watch uh, when I got this set, and I, I appreciate it very much. Jane Fonda is terrific, Donald Sutherland is also terrific, and it, it looks fantastic. I mean, just the, the way the movie looks and the music they, they use, uh, just a just a really creepy, ugly, dark mystery. Here's a movie that's not terribly well known, Desperate Characters, starring Shirley MacLaine and Kenneth Mars. <clears throat> and I I didn't see this when it first came out either, but I remember hearing about it. And it's about a, a married couple living in New York City, and they're trying to make sense of their life. How does it describe it here? Two, two disillusioned New Yorkers as they struggle to come to grips with the normal, quote unquote, life with which they can no longer cope. This might be something interesting to watch during this uh, lockdown period. People who feel trapped in their surroundings and the, the violence, the, the changing uh, neighborhoods and mores and all that sort of thing. Really interesting movie and I need to watch it again. Finally, here we go. Let's get serious, folks. On a double bill with the miniskirt mob, here is Chrome and Hot Leather, uh, a, a classic biker film with a lot of uh, of gratuitous violence and all that stuff starring uh let's see who's in this movie we have william smith who's 
really one of the legends of movies like this. William Smith, Tony Young, Michelle, or Michael Haynes, Peter Brown, Marvin Gaye, the singer, he has a small part in this, and a very small part by Cheryl Ladd, I think very early in her career. And it's all about a, a Marine who comes home from uh, Vietnam, and a, a biker gang has killed his um, his fiance, played by Cheryl Ladd, and he goes out for revenge, and it, it gets <clears throat> gloriously bloody. And it's on it's on a double bill with Mini Skirt Mob, which star uh, get get this cast Mini Skirt Mob, uh, which was not that was in 1960 yeah 1968, so it's not for 1971 here. But anyway, uh, Jeremy Slate, Diane McBain, Sherry Jackson. Patty McCormick, oh, uh, probably even better than Chrome and Hot Leather. So anyway, those are my movies from 1971. Um, let me know which ones you've seen, which ones you haven't, and what you think about a little um, reading to you here over on camera. Uh, 11 minutes, that's more than enough. Jay, happy birth year. Take care, everyone.